Hey, welcome to iLecture Online and our next big topic in chemistry is chemical equations. Sometimes we also call it stoichiometry because there we learn how to not only understand where what an equation is and what constitutes an equation but also learn how to balance the equation and how to properly calculate how much you start with and how much you end up with. We're talking about products that you start with and products you end up with. Now we don't call them products in chemistry. In chemistry the stuff you start with is they're called reactants. Sometimes we also call them reagents. So we start with some chemical uh, compounds, sometimes gas, sometimes liquid, sometimes aqueous solutions, sometimes solids, and we mix them together. And because of their chemical properties, a reaction may or may not occur. If a reaction occurs, we indicate that with an arrow like that, so that these particular constituents called reactants, then produce a product, an end result. There's a chemical reaction there and you end up with something different than what you started with. Now the basic compounds are still, or the basic atoms are still there. We start with hydrogen here and oxygen there and the end product still has hydrogen and oxygen in it. We don't, they don't disappear, but they end up in a different formation, a different bonding scheme. So those are called chemical uh, equations. So we start with some reactants. This plus sign simply means that the first one reacts with the second one. In other words, hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen, oxygen gas to yield H2O. Of course, we know that to be water. Now notice that this equation is not yet balanced. We'll learn how to balance them in just a little while. So what, why do we need to balance equations? Well, technically, if we ignore the amount that we start with and the amount that we end up with, we simply here are indicating that you need some hydrogen and you mix it with oxygen and you end up with some water. But now, if we want to be more particular about it, we know that we need to have a certain amount of each to make that reaction possible and so that there will not be leftovers at the end. So the way you look at it is to say, well, if these represent moles, let's say we have one mole of hydrogen gas. Of course, hydrogen gas is a diatomic molecule. There's two hydrogens bonded together. And we mix that with a mole of oxygen gas. Do we get a mole of water? And the answer is no, that's not going to be the case. The reason is, if you, be, if you look at it carefully, notice here that we have, in essence, two moles of hydrogen atoms, which forms one mole of hydrogen gas. But if you just keep track of the atoms, we have two moles of atoms plus two moles of atoms of oxygen leads to one mole of water. And the answer is no, because here you have two moles of hydrogen and only one mole of oxygen. When you started with two moles of oxygen, so that's why we say this is not balanced. This equation does not meet a standard. In other words, we should then keep track of the additional oxygen that we have that didn't end up in the water over here. Or we can rearrange the amount that we start with so that the amount that we started with, the reactants, exactly equal the amount of products that we end up with. And so that's what we call balancing the equations. And how do we do that? Well, there's a special technique to that. The first thing you do is typically go to your first element or the element that only appears once on each side of the equation. Now in this case, hydrogen only appears once and oxygen only appears once. So you can actually almost start with either one. So let's start with hydrogen. So let's draw a little block arrow like that. And notice that the hydrogens are balanced. You have two moles of hydrogen here and two moles of hydrogen there. So hydrogen is balanced. We don't have to worry about that. Now let's look at oxygen. Okay. Now we have, oh, another thing that we could do is we could draw a little box in front here, for example. Let's draw a little box. And whatever number we put in front has to be the same. Since we have an H2 indicator here and an H2 indicator there, that means that whatever amount we have here, whatever amount we have there must be the same. Otherwise, hydrogen is no longer balanced. So we have to keep that in mind. Now looking at the oxygen, we have two moles of oxygen here and we only have one mole of oxygen there. So Oxygen is not balanced in this equation. To make that balanced, we have to multiply this by 2. If we have 2 moles of H2O, then we'll have 2 moles of oxygen, which is then balanced with oxygen. And you say, well, if you do that, then hydrogen is no longer balanced. And yes, that is okay. That is indeed correct. But let's, we need to do it one step at a time. So to balance these two, since we have 2 moles over here and only 1 mole of oxygen over here, so of oxygen, of oxygen, we need to balance those two so we can do that by multiplying this by two. So now if we have two moles of water, then we have two moles of oxygen which balances the two moles of oxygen over here. So now we know that's balanced. Now we go back and say, well, once we do that, these two are no longer balanced because here we have, in essence have a one 
and there we have a 2 and we know that has to be the same otherwise hydrogen cannot be balanced so we have to put a 2 here as well since this 2 does not affect the oxygen over there the whole thing now becomes balanced so the end equation is that we start out with 2 moles of hydrogen gas a total of 4 moles of hydrogen atoms plus 1 mole of oxygen gas just like in algebraic expressions you do not have to put the 1 there if you don't want to reacts with oxygen and yields 2 moles of H2O and now this equation is now a balanced equation and so again the way we read that we start out with we have 2 moles of hydrogen gas a total of 4 moles of hydrogen atoms we react that with 1 mole of oxygen gas which is 2 moles of oxygen atoms and that yields 2 moles of H2O which is 2 moles of water molecules and that's how we balance equations now we'll show you some more examples in later videos to get a better feel of how to actually balance out those equations